NordFPV has partnered with Olaf Ugland to design and bring to market the first frame from our shop. We're calling it the Nord 5 HD and you have here a sample of how it's going to look like built. Today I want to show you the frame and how to build it so you have a reference, a guide of how to do with this new product that we're introducing. But first, let's give 30 seconds to my sponsor. Do you need a good service to print your circuit boards? I'm sure PCB Way will have the right solution for you at the best price. They don't only have different kinds of PCB like Flex PCB and Advanced PCB, but now you can get your circuit boards with higher TG at the same price. Imagine that. Remember, PCB Way can help you with many other services. Go and visit them at their website. And right now it's the eighth anniversary and have a lot of promotions ongoing. So what's special about this frame? The first thing is that Olaf put a lot of effort and detail to create a frame that has the less amount of vibration possible. We know that vibration is pretty bad for when we're flying both for the motors acting too much or working too much. And also if you want to fly smooth and do your tricks and these kind of things you need something that is responding and it's not fighting all the time just against itself right that fight normally happens because drones has vibrations the way they are built or what you're carrying or how you build it and the the main thing of this frame is the effort put on how to avoid all that and i'm gonna give you two examples right now number one is the fact that Olaf chose to have what's called a shoulder bolt, which is a screw with a smooth portion that fits exactly in the holes that support or holds the arms together with the frame. That smooth part, what makes is that the contact between the arm and the body, it's so good that it's kind of like one solid part. Regular screws will have threads around that even if you don't believe it, it's going to introduce a small portion or a small amount of vibration and that's what we're trying to avoid at all costs. Another example is the fact that we're using nylon carbon fiber parts uh, wherever there is a screw going through and contacting with the body of the frame. That means and it's also something that I never thought before I got into all this is you normally have TPU parts under the arms, for example, or under the motors, for example. But TPU is flexible, right? And when you are screwing, you know that you can go further in or you can leave it a little bit uh, out because you don't want to break the whole TPU. But that also means that when the motor is mounted and you have that little play there with the TPU or the soft plastic, the motor is also going to have certain degree of play. And that play is going to introduce vibrations to your frame and to your drone. And that's going to make the drone work harder on the motors and fly less smoother. Having a hard plastic carefully selected, it's making the contact between the screw and the motor to be as tight as possible and therefore reducing the amount of vibrations. The frame has two other things that I want to call out before showing you how to build. And number one is the flexibility to mount the VTX. If you look at the back plate of the frame, you're going to see that the holes where you can install the VTX are a little bit longer and they are not precisely one hole they are like a space that space is making or giving you enough play to have different sizes of vtx's and you can still mount mounted with a screw or zip ties if you want so we have tested the vista we have tested the air unit and we have tested the Walksnay vtx and they work perfectly here I'm pretty sure that some analog VTXs are going to fit in there since they should be in the range of the space that we give, but I haven't tested that yet. But digital, this is made for it. 
The third thing that I want to mention about the frame is the way that Ulov thought about cable management. A lot of people don't think about it, but having cables rumbling around the, the frame, the drone, it's also introducing vibrations. And as you've heard, that's the main thing that we want to avoid here. Having spaces dedicated to pass your cables, for example, if you want to, or when you are installing this, the cable that has uh, the camera, the connected camera to the VTX, it's going through a very specific hole in between everything under the stack. That makes that cable to sit there without being going around or creating any kind of interference or being on top of any of the components of the stack. You have a specific hole, you have a specific place for them. The same is with the other cables that we have in the, in the frame, like the antenna cables or the RX cable. Everything has a place to go to not disturb nothing of the electronics. Helping with um, making it look cooler, making it look like a nice professional build, avoiding any kind of interference or avoiding as much as possible electromagnetic interference and avoiding introducing vibrations to our frame. So now let's look at how we build this frame. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is to think about if you're gonna be using a 30 by 30 stack or a 20 by 20 stack because we will be installing the, the screw stacks here as the first step. So in my case, I'm using 30 by 30 and I'm going to be taking the long screws that we have on the, or the longest screws that we have in the back and install them on this plate. This side that you see like this, it's supposed to go downwards and you have the press nuts where you're going to screw the long screw. This is actually one feature of the frame that I like a lot because when you screw the, the screws on the press nuts, they are sitting there in place and you can work later on your stack without losing the screws or having to hold them or have, adding extra nuts uh, to hold them in place. This is not the same case for the 2020 stack. This works like this for the 30, 30 stack. But uh, on the 2020, you will need to use a nut to hold the screw in place. Okay, the first step is to take screw, one of the small silver screw with the washer, put it through the farthest in screw and then screw your arm in there. The same for all four arms. Okay, now that we have the four arms in with the small screw and the, the cone washer, please remember that the screw that we're going to be using is the smallest one in the bag so it doesn't come out here you see that it's still under the arm top next step it's going to be to add this part which we're calling a jiggle key and it's going to be in between all arms In my experience, the best way to do this is to loosen up a little bit the arms, the screws, so you have movement, freedom of movement on the arms, and then you can fit the part, and after the part is in, you can screw the arms properly. It's never good to tie them too much in the beginning when you're building, so you have a way to, to work around things. But once that, that jiggle key is in, it shouldn't fall down. It's going to be there. It's going to help connect the strengths of the arms. And it's going to give you this space there. You see where you can actually 
put your cables through from the front to the bottom or the other way around depending what you're doing and what you need. Next step is to connect this middle plate to what we just built. Remember that this space here is facing down right now and our screws are to mount the stack. So this piece is gonna fit this way. We're gonna be using the shoulder bolts together with one of these cone washers to insert on the last hole that we have for the arm. And again, you're gonna to have to wiggle a little bit the arm to make it go through and then you can start screwing and we do the same for the four arms. It should look like this. You have the inside and the outside. Again, remember the inside are the shortest screws that we have. The outside are the shoulder bolts that we are using. Also remember that right now I'm building this just to show you how to build the frame, but if you are, or when you are building your drone, you have to have the cables already routed through this hole from the front to the back uh, before you put this together. You, otherwise it's going to be complicated to pass some of the screws, especially if you have like the, the coaxial head for the DJI camera and these kind of things. Do it before, leave all the cables, plan your building beforehand. Like in, in my case, I'm using the power cables on the front and that made everything to be turned 180 degrees, right? And I have uh, to relocate some of the cables and find longer cables for my RX and these kind of things. Think about it before you put everything together because you want to use this hole in here to nicely route your cables. You can proceed now to install the spacers. The long ones are in the front, the short ones are on the back. So when you are going to install the TPU parts, one thing to consider is the fact that this opening here, it's looking to the front and up because the idea is that you're gonna be using that opening for this plate. If you look at this plate, it has one side that is flat. It goes against the plate here and you will have it and it will sit like this, where you have the plastic, the TPU just coming above the plate and the other piece just in the hole. So they sit right in place there. Because of that that I was explaining about the hole, it's important that this spacer, the flat side sits looking forward because Again, this, it's all made so it fits perfectly. For example, we chose to have hex spacer so this connection can happen and it becomes more solid than if it's a round spacer. Since I'm building the frame here just to show you how it works um, and you have to have the cables done before actually starting to put everything together, there are a few things that I've uh, jumped or forgot. This part, which is the one holding some cables and the receiver and anything that you want to pass from the stack side to the back. For example, if you're using the, the Vista, you might have the connection here on the back or the cables to the antenna or the cables are coming to the receiver and you have the receiver here. This part goes in here and it's gonna be held by the screws holding this spacers as well. So before you put the spacers, you have to have your receiver set up. You have to have this position in place before doing that. This bump is also going to be here in the front and it has to be screwed before you put the, the spacers on your final product. These little TPU parts, 
they have to be looking down and they fit in this hole and they're gonna hold your camera in place using two screws this one the smallest ones that we have in there they are M2 they are M2 and using a washer as well depending on which setup you are gonna use uh, you will have different printed parts you can we're gonna have the parts available on uh, printable and thingiverse so you can download and print yourself or you can do yourself part but here for example I'm using a Vista holder for the antenna and a small holder for the RX antenna and it will look like this last step is to put the top plate with these two holes or the four holes and screw everything in last thing will be to add the battery pad which you should actually do before putting the plate in place we recommend you to clean uh, with IPA alcohol this part maybe warm up a little bit with hot air the glue and then just put it in place and glue it like this and it's ready so just to summarize a few things that you have to keep in mind when building the frame number one these screws inside these screws inside are the shorter screws that we have on in the package the outside screws are the shoulder bolts you start with the inside to have everything in place and then you can go and have the shoulder bolts on. Also, very important, as I mentioned a few times, that you have to have the cables in place before putting those three first steps together because otherwise it's gonna be complicated to pass the cables correctly and that's one of the main features of the, of the frame, the cable management. You have to also consider how you're gonna put all the cables and the ones that are gonna go inside this part to go from, from the back of the stack to the back of the VTX. Uh, you have to consider that and, and do it before you attach this and attach the spacers. Well, hopefully you have enough to understand how to build this uh, frame. In my opinion, this is not a super beginner friendly frame because you have to have in consideration how you're mounting the stack and where the cables are coming up and these kind of things before you put things in place but once you understand that it, it's not complicated um, in in my what I've done just to show you a little bit I have the power cables to the front and we have a specific or special opening there that uh, fits very well with this we have the vista on the back which can be attached either by screws or you can also use zip ties and we have specific place for those zip ties to go through the printed part and it will look very cool very neat and you have a very nice solution to hold your vista in place as i said before we have also different tpu parts that you can receive or purchase or print yourself so you can modify and customize your drone as you want. Hopefully I'll show you something that is interesting. I'm very happy and proud of, about this product and wish you luck with your build and see you soon. Thank you for watching.